So they used to come down here and scribble ideas and go back up. And that's no joke. Taking our musician, taking our style of music, and label it when Beckett sing marijuana. And then touch took it up to like Teresa, Kiki, mm -hmm. Loving Candon. The raga started here, but we never labeled it. Fireman Hooper has a beat with Agent Bailey with put up put up the wood under the pot. That and Araconda. There's no other beat on earth. That's what Agent did there. And nobody have a job. Then some got jobs, but not me. So I and I'm married. I just got married. I, my wife just got a kid, you know? Even so that when we went George down, they had never, never seen a remote mic down. And Dings is dancing up and getting all like people from Scatellites and them and going down <laughs> to the crowd. We kind of had a formula in a sense in that um, we know what the people like. They like slogans. They like, they like village song, commerce in a village. Yeah, yeah. You could imagine a bachelor living in a house by himself. Mm -hmm. You think mm -hmm. those core things going to ever get changed? It's now 13 minutes past four o'clock in the nation's capital. We are located in Ottawa, Canada. It's 24 degrees on the inside. We have with us my former schoolmate, former band leader of the band touch, Mr. Brian Paper Alexander. We're going to go a little bit back, way back. Mr. Brian Alexander, introduce yourself to my listening audience. Oh, good, good evening, my friends. Uh, well, I'm just simple old Brian, uh, a musician, uh, act, uh, activist, a social and political activist. Um, I work in the private sector. That's about it. P some people know me. That's about it. I want to give a shout out to uh, all our Facebook audience, uh, listeners around the world, listeners especially in SVG. Um, at this time, we have the privilege of welcoming to Vinci Internet Radio on the program Strictly Vinci, a man who has made his contribution musically to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and he's still doing it. Um, I just want to give a special welcome to Mr. Brian Paper Alexander. Brian, welcome to the program, and it's a pleasure to have you here, sir. It's also a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. Yeah, one elephant I want to get out of the room is, is the name Paper, though, because he never really... I'm really to me why they call you paper. So if you can just clear that up with me, CP might know, but I don't know. I prefer to hear it from you that, you know, why they do paper. Well, I'm giving you some signals here. I hope you pick it up. <laughs> the size. I'm, I'm holding on a, a very flat chest. Mm -hmm. um, no, no mountains or anything, no domes at all, no, no built mm -hmm. up there. So it was mm -hmm. a childhood name that somebody had given, given me. Some of them walked away with with a couple chops or so because of mad when you call me paper chess. <laughs> it, it came out of the of, of the name paper chess because my my chest is flat. So you call uh -huh. me that in stubs, you have to be prepared to run. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> but but there's a thing with nickname, you know, from, from way back that if you get mad, um they, they continue to, to to call you, you know, that day. But if you if you accept it, it kind of disappears from you, you know. So well, I didn't, I didn't know that at that time. Somebody <laughs> told me that after. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, got, I got stuck with the name. And I like it, really, actually. Mm -hmm. It's a nice name. Without yeah, the chess. I mean, Without yeah. the chess. If, if you say chess, well, mm -hmm. I will feel kind of offended. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, Brian, big up, big up yourself. Or, or let me say, large up yourself, size up yourself for, for you know, what you've done musically in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know, and we can probably get into the other aspects of it, of, of being an activist and, and stuff like that. But I just want you to tell us, like, how it all started for you musically, you know, in terms of reaching close to the band. Like, give us that way back thing, like your first love for music and stuff like that. Okay, it's a very strange story. I hope it's not too long. Um, it started... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before you continue, we, ha we have time here. We see that really we give you time to tell the people your story because we want you to motivate and influence and, and help people get over their, their struggles as well. So not only the sweet part, we like to hear the, you know, the struggles that you went through. So, you know, sorry to interrupt you, but, but you can continue. No problem. It's interactive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, my father's a head teacher um, in, in um, Stubbs. We lived, I, I was born in Stubbs and my musical thing, Trek, started 
um, a very long time when I was not even teenage yet. I met up with friends like um, Louis Daisley. His father also was a head teacher also in, in Stubbs and the Georgetown era. And in those days, they used to send those teachers all over the place, you know, according to how politically connected they were. They would be given um, a Siberia trip, you know? You know what I mean by that? They, if you live in Stubbs, they might end up in Union Island. Mm -hmm. Well, my father was lucky. He stayed in Stubbs for a while. And, and I met, I had friends like Louis Daisley, Ralby, Ralby Hathaway, who people wouldn't know of. But my friends, we, we usually meet on the bridge after school. And um, Tasty, um, who is Cecil Richards, a very good batsman. I don't know how he didn't make Sylvan Society. Was a very good guitarist and also a, a great singer. He sounded like he sounded like um Jimmy Cliff and he and I think he knew all of Jimmy Cliff's songs. Hmm. I was really particularly interested in music. I was interested in talking stupidness and playing cricket. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I I'm mostly a comedian, right? So I used to try out my jokes on them, but they weren't interested in that. They were into their music and they, they like singing and so you know. Um, Scorpion father body. He used, to, he used to play guitar too. So I say, okay, let me join the crowd. And um, Scorpion uncle, who is Van Rick, Van Rick um, Jack, was the first person to put my hand on a guitar. You have to have a guitar first. And, mm -hmm. um, and he showed me a couple of cards and I got interested. So I joined the whole um, Ben Bridge, Bridge Ivy Joshua built that bridge. We used to come down there as soon as it's three o'clock. If we're not playing cricket, we go there and we play music. That's where it started. And um, um, we had a piano in our house, quite strangely. Uh, we had a piano, well, you know, those colonial days, a piano must be in a, in a middle-class house, my father being a head teacher, and they always have pianos in those people's houses. I never liked the piano, because I always put, I have a stigma on the piano uh, with, with a fellow named Liberace who was playing. And, um, and then there were this taboo about those kind of people. Um, you understand what I mean? Um, like Liberace. I'm talking about Liberace. So I mm -hmm. always think, I always parallel the piano to those kind of people. Like they kind of, uh, I don't want to say it over your ear. I don't know if you want to encourage mm -hmm. that. So the thing, the thing, I used to, then got, then Ralby had a way. Got a call from a band in um in, in Prospect. He was my close friend. I used to live I used to live by him practically, and um he got a call to a band down in Prospect, owned by owned by um Mr. Burton Williams, Burton Williams Music Center fame, and um he was a bass man. So he called they call Godfrey because they call um Ralby because Ralby had a, a guitar, and the lead guitarist at that time is a fellow who's deceased now named. Bossa, Bossa Peters. So the name of the band was, was Soul Ingredients and that's where it all started. I used to call, I used to go and follow Ralby down to his band practice. And I get, I got real, in, I got, fell in love with music after them. Because mm -hmm. everybody around me is playing music. So I had no choice. So one day this band, it, only, it had two guitarists and a bass and a drummer and two vocalists, so no keyboards. And one day got, um, I keep calling him Godfrey. His name is Ralph Bihadari. Say, Brian, those guys decide they want to put a keyboard in the band because everybody have a keyboard these days. And it's all going to use to play. So he say, hey, you know what? Hey, you know, I feel... They say a guy named Parky Israel. Parky Israel used to play a band, I think, named Invoice. And he had um, he was ready to, to go overseas. So he was selling a Fafisa organ for $500. That was a lot of money for me. So I went to, I went to a bank. I say, I'm going to get that money there somehow. With no money, because I wasn't working. And um, somebody in the village who was a shopkeeper, who was my father friend, I went by him and told him, to support me and think, let me get this an organ I want to get in a band. And he happily did that. So I bought my organ and took it into the band. But I can't play, because <laughs> I, I don't like piano. I always yeah. have it stigmatized with Liberace and those kind of guys who look that way, like Elton John and other people like that clack, clack, mm -hmm. cling. And you know, they have a tab on these kind of people. So I'm not going to play that, but with Ralby, egg me on and I did. I say, well, okay, I can't play it though. Bought it and can't play it. But I played, I was pretty good on the guitar. So I transposed the notes from the guitar onto the keyboard. Wow. So 
if I um I didn't even know the names of those notes. Much. I didn't know the notes <laughs> and the keyboard. So here I am now, have to say, E, the E and the E and the um guitar. Mm. I, I, I play the E because my guitar was tuned, right? I play the guitar, uh, Royal B guitar, sorry, I'd never had one. Royal B guitar is going ping, and then we look, look on top the, the keyboard and to see which note that is. Oh, <laughs> ping, and we got it. So you know a major chord is pong, 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 pong. So I form my first major chord on the E. Pong, 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 pong. That's how I did it, and I did it with every note, which you know, 12 notes are, are is in music, only 12 notes. And mm. I I learned every single chord on that that I knew on guitar onto the organ. And I started to play, it was like a month, and I was ready for the band because they didn't care, they was waiting for me, they have an organist, but with an organ. Mm. So whatever I do is thing, and then Bossa will help me. It's even um Bossa is a guitarist. He would say, well, we're going to play this tune in this key and, you know, the chords are in it will be this. And I started writing. I was the only person in the band writing chords because I couldn't play mm. on the keyboard. So that's okay. where I learned from soul ingredients and from soul ingredients. Surprisingly, I got that good that um, when soul ingredients was on the verge of breaking up because they had a little back in internal free. And I, I, my cousin, who was, who was Corvin Robinson, living in the States now, um, he's a twin. He's my cousin. And um, he had a band named Together People. And he said to come down and play with him, his band. And, and, and I went to that band. He named it Intense Heat afterwards. So, and then Asterix, a dream come true now. Asterix called me. Asterix, mm -hmm. at that time, if not the number one, it was number two band in St. Vincent. And they mm -hmm. calling me. It's bye-bye to my cousin. I love you, cousin, <laughs> but... I going to get at higher heights, I, and I went to Asterix, and we, we pl I played with them up up to eighty four. I think I played for about um three or four years up to eighty four. We even had a during that time we we had got we got one road match. Can't wine. All the men who feel their bright see them on the floor tonight. You can't wine. Mm -hmm. So that that's mm -hmm. where the road match there. They used to support Beckett too. Back up Beckett went on tours with Beckett. I, I went on tour with them to the United States of America. And, and um, what happened up there in America, I didn't like it much because these guys, we were up there fooling around. I am married, I just got married and I can't support my wife if I stay with these guys because they're playing every three weeks and the amount of money I was getting. I decided I'm going to come back down to, to St. Vincent. And then I said, I'm not going to play with a band that I didn't, have ownership in. So that's where Touch came in afterwards. I got with a bunch of musicians who I thought were the top line musicians in Simmons at that time. Willis Williams, I just left um, the set of um, um, Exodus. And so, 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 so Brian, let's go back to where you, when you were playing the, the keyboard there. At that time, did you have um, any formal musical training um, in terms of um, theory? None, because I, I, I have to say little. I went to a lady in Brighton. Her name was Mrs. Richards. I don't know. She was a teacher. And uh, uh, she, uh, I started there and through. And um, I just, I, I, I'm just like these guys nowadays. They just want to feel they could punch buttons. And, and I just didn't <laughs> go back. Mm. They, they could punch buttons. And I really self-taught. But I, re I could read now a little bit. But mm. it was just mostly by air. Yeah. So, and around what year were we looking at there when you joined the first band there? It was certainly in the, the uh, 80, about 1979, 80. It could have been mm. 80. I'm not so good at dates, but it couldn't be more than that. When we had the carnival, there was a carnival that was postponed. There was a carnival that was postponed for some reason. I don't know if it, uh, it was. It was a, a marina or what? Something, some carnival was postponed. And the vibrating skate song a song with, with, with rain. So I, I can't remember. Bowl revelers, I think. Bowl revelers. And um, mm. I think it is sem I think it will be the 70s. Somebody could could educate us on that. I'm not good at dates, eh? but I won't be <laughs> too far off. So I started my uh, journey in music in, but I never show I left the band. Uh -huh. Asterix in 84 
because we started touch in 84 immediately when I came home because I got mm -hmm. to talking to Cherry in so you all know up there a bass player then um friends call friends now I think Willis called Cherry I got Godfrey Godfrey used to play Sweet Oath and Exodus Godfrey guitar he's a guitar as a guy with all the some road mad songs for touch the one one um take away saw last one take with somebody woman and um move your front he sang that one too so he came in the band and then there was um we had a drummer at first but we decided we don't like drummers because they're too noisy mm -hmm. <laughs> and we got the we started out too with the with the the the, the, uh, the right. drum machine right and incorporated a, a drummer also Right. Hold on. I know the touch story is very interesting and, and I'm leave, I'm saving that sweet part there for it, you know. But you had joined Asterix before Touch. Is, am I right? Yes. That's the last band I play with. And I and I said, I'm not going to play for people again. And, and Touch had gotten Touch had gotten a road march while you were there. Touch? No, mean, sorry, I mean, not touch. Asterix. Asterix. I mean, Asterix had yes. gotten a road march. Yes, I'm um, written by Donnet Dapwell, the guitarist. Mm -hmm. We so, worked out. A, I right. worked out, I played on that. I I have my signature on that too, you know. I play that on a on a synthesizer, you know. So so it yeah. seems like everything Brian hand touches it turns to gold. Well, I ain't want to say so. Follow you, follow you, you know. Well, perhaps I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, I feel I'm lucky too, but I can't get the road match. <laughs> but I'll, I'll come back to you with that luck. I'll come back to you with that luck, you know, before CP jumps in, right? Um, yeah, so you you were with Asterix, and then um, what what happened there um, when you went, went over to Touch? Don't go right into the Touch story, though, because I love the Touch story, because Touch is my band. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. All right. mm. So you, you, um, you were finished with Asterix. How come uh, when you parted ways with Asterix? Tell us how you parted ways to move over to Touch and then CP can jump in after that. Oh, well, like I said, uh, we were in America and these guys decided they're going to... I thought it really was we have a lot of jobs lined up and I don't start to shop my pocket to get some money. So <laughs> <laughs> I say, yeah, but I, when I noticed that we are idling around every day, nobody have a job. Mm -hmm. Then some got jobs, but not me because... Mm -hmm. I come up there for the music, you know? And um, and most of them who went there are family, yeah? Um, I have nothing against you guys understanding the reality that happened. Yeah, they, man, that's, that's what we're talking So yeah. when all them gone that way, I'm living in a basement by one of their friends, you know? So, I and I'm married. I just got married. I, my wife just got a kid, you know, the first mm -hmm. kid. And um, so I, I met a friend up there who decided he's gonna sponsor me, luck again. A guy who, who is deceased now, Mr. Holmes, Patrick, he said, man, Brian, you got to leave these guys. You have to go home and meet your wife. And he, um, and he um, paid my passage. They even seized my passport, you know that? So that I couldn't move <laughs> when I wanted. Wow. I didn't want I didn't want to really put this out there, but it's the truth. No, man, it's, it's important. Like I said, the and, struggle, you have to see the struggle, too, you know, because we don't want to look at Brian as just a successful uh, musician and people don't know that you went through some loops, you know, to get to where you're at, you know? So it's important that you see those things, you know? Yeah, so he, the, my friend who, well, he see me as a bad man, so he went by the leader and said, you got to get this man's passport because we'll bring the sheriff on you. And I would know no struggle at all. He gave us the passport and I was able to go home. This, this, this dude, Homer Patrick, bought clothes for me to carry down for my people and stuff because I had nothing. I had nothing up there uh, because all my money had gone. The band wasn't playing enough. And when they played, it wasn't much you get in. I think those people in those clubs up there used to rip us off because I think we should have gotten. I wouldn't go, go into the figures and so so I came back, like I said, and I decided that I go, music is going to be my thing, but I am not going to work on anybody. I am going to be part of ownership. That's why I joined with a bunch of these guys, these guys that I spoke about, Willis Williams, Godfrey Dublin, Cherry Inns. Um, our vocalist was Dings Johnson, imagine that. Dings, so mm -hmm. people from bands who were fed up, who were saying, we ain't want that, we want our own thing. And we decided we're going to even change the musical outlook when we brought in 
uh, almost strictly electronic. We look like a space band, first band to have a, a remote mics. True. Every person had a remote mic. So even so that when we went to Georgetown and they had never, never seen a remote mic, Dings was going down the crowd. You know, Dings like to show yourself the thing. <laughs> he, he gone down in the crowd and leave us on the stage, you know? And the people them saying, nah, man, them, 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 my men, I take them a play. True. The lip sync, you remember they say the lip sync. The lip sync games. I'm telling man, come back on the stage. These people ain't ready for this kind of thing. So things came up, but we nearly get blows because the people think we were cheating. We were cheating mm -hmm. them. Although it was a free show, eh? it's Bamba, mm -hmm. Lamba Balcom was the man who brought us up there. Uh, you know this rich guy, Lamba hey, Balcom? Lamba, yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, so Lamba brought us up. He's a drummer to us, well, apparently. And he brought us up there to play. So we decided we could, he, he carried us by, I think by 40, 40 at something outdoors. And we, mm. and we played in that outdoor for free for these judge some people and still they wanted to beat us because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we was free. <laughs> I mean, I think Malcolm did give us a little money. Eh? We wanted to, we wanted to show people the new really setting. True. So we got this chance and we go judge them. And things is dancing up and getting all like, people from satellites and them and going down to the crowd. <laughs> going down to the crowd. I said, man, come up back because we'll get beaten. Because they thought we were playing tapes. And mm. I must honestly say, the Song of Touch mm. really was a smooth song mm. at that time. And I didn't blame the people to thinking, thinking that we perhaps were uh, miming, you know? Mm. And, and that, that's, how, that's how the whole thing started. You listen to the Fresh Clean song, you listen to Vinci Internet Radio, and you listen to a very interesting interview with my former schoolmate, former leader of the band Touch. Brian, when I knew you, I knew you as a somebody who has a lot of humor. I remember your dry humors in school. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to go through that, but that's, that's where I know you from. I never knew you as a musician in school. Uh, that, that's the thing. I never knew you, you as a musician. There, but you talk about head teachers. I tell you something. My father also was a headmaster. I remember uh -huh. they sent him to Ovia, and from Ovia straight to Kelapo. Yeah, and he was so, living where? Byra. We we from Byra Hill. Yeah. So he so, must have touched somebody politically. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I I so I know exactly what you're talking about when it come to um these uh things. So let's let's go back. I mean, one of the things I really noticed about touch, and you just touched on it, or I was gonna touch on it later, it, it is the smooth flow of the music. We we could we can get away from that. And that's why one of one of my favorite bands are always touch. I remember I used to work at a party club too, so I know a little bit more than um yeah, I remember you people. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I used to I used to work there as well. So when you uh when you left school. What was the first thing that you got into to uh, besides the music? Well, um, getting a job. You remember those days? Uh, this this setting nowadays is far different than long. Well, you know how it go. Um, you 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 you. I'm you, um, in a household. Thing changes might happen. Parents um, going overseas and parents get into retirement age and whatever. You have to. What we call in stubs and in your era, fudge. We had to fudge for yourself. So you had to go looking for a job. It's not like these people nowadays who are very, very, very um, lucky in that they could go and do tertiary education. Like, we never go to college. I don't know if you went to college down here. Uh, when we, get our, we got our subjects, I think we, we just go looking for a job. So I got a job. I got a job at, um, at um, Star Garage. As a as a, um, a clock, a checkout clock for all the vehicles, but a silky, silky, the famous silky, the silver. Yeah. Yes. And um, I, I, I was so good at, at my job that he decided he would send me to the hotel. So I went to the, his, uh, his um, brother, Casper, who, who, who um, manages the hotel. And um, he gave me a job up there at, at a clock too, also. But uh, their way I learned everything I know about about business, you know. Um, my had um he put me two ladies in charge of me, uh, Selma Millington and Miss Miss Dublin. And then I learned everything there. That's where I, I worked for a, a good while. 
Then I, I think he didn't like the band thing with me, my manager, because by then I was with this, with this band called Intense Heat, which is my cousin band. And we used to play and go and practice. So I had to run away. Some of the hours I had to run away. And I would tell the, the girls used to, um, they used to cover up for me and tell him, tell them, tell the manager that I send him down the road and whatever. Which was lies, eh? Till he, you know, lies eventually catch up on you. And the relationship got sour where um, they think we must part ways. And um, so I decided to leave. Um, well, it's most a fire, fire leave thing. We decided, yeah, well, Brian, you're making it. So uh, you better do something else. Then I went to PH Brand Company. So only two people ever work with in my whole life. Casper De Silva, his brother, and his brother, Silky, that's one. And um, PH Brand Company, I, I went there as a, a shipping broker, as you know. And I'm there today in, in, um, in uh, middle management and so. That's where, yeah. I, I, because I always thought that music, working for people, was not important. My music was the most important thing. And I thought really I would eventually make it a career. But the band, the band touch, these guys had different ideas because I think we had reached the peak where we could have gone out to be even greater. I think so because the first time I saw you in Byron Hill, remember that small place over in Byron Hill? You came there with the band Intense Heat. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, then that name was a sheep pen. Yes, I don't know yes. <laughs> What? <laughs> sheep pen. Oh man, I played in a sheep pen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then uh, but that's the first thing I said. I never knew you play music, so I was um, a little bit skeptical at that time, you know. See you there just showing up in a band. I never knew you uh, play music when you were in school. You never talk about it. Uh, so, so I was kind of wondering, where did it start for you? <laughs> yeah, because you're right, because... um. I never talk about that in school. I, I, I wasn't interested in music, really. I was forced, practically, by my friend, Raul Bihadaway. I don't know if you know him. Raul Bihadaway used to work at WJ Abbott. He forced me into music. We were real close, eh? uh, real close brother um, buddies. And um, I, I never thought of music as anything at the time, just a, a little by the side thing, because my father do not have me up. And mother say, well, he, that one day he's going to be something like a doctor or something. You know, it is already with these people. They, they, they're telling you what you should be, you know? And, and, and I feel not that they beat you into submission until you get eventually to be that thing that they want you to be. Yes. Yeah, because, because I, I, I come, coming from the same background, too, I, I, I know exactly how it, how it is. They, they basically yeah. choose your path for you rather than letting you um, go the way you want it to go. But, yes. but, say, but saying all that now, when you um, when you migrated, let's go back a little bit. Let's go a bit to touch now. When, when you got, because Godfrey is also, also my good friend. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so when Where you get, all, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also a good friend of mine. So when you get all these players together now, how, how, how do you mesh? Because it's top players you have. You know, you have some of the best players in St. Vincent at that time. So how do you able to get them together to mesh? Oh, that is the easiest thing. Because really and truly, they are my teachers. Godfrey was ahead of me musically. Willis, ahead of me musically. Um, Cherry Ains was a bass player and plays keyboard also and guitar. He's really a guitarist, turn bass man. A lot of us play a lot of things that people don't even know. Willis is a guitarist too, all right? So these guys are ahead of me. I think I was the baby in the band, although I was the oldest. Because, um, well, besides Dinks. These guys are way ahead of me musically. So it was so easy. It's just to manage now. And you talk about leader band. Really and truly, they, when we started, we, I was recognized as the leader because I, I forced myself into being the lead, that leader. But when the band gets to know it, it itself, what we do, we don't really have a leader. We, we could rotate leadership because the band was so good. Everybody had skills personal skills and also musical skills. It was very, very easy. Everybody just practice and you practice, you practice, practice. Those days we were playing people's song, like, you know, um, you know, we play so so songs, we play soul songs, Bob Marley songs, More Love with, with um, Eric Donaldson, 
with a nice American ballad, ballads and so. So you go home and learn them. And you got the, got the cards. And not like now, you have everything on YouTube and whatever you could go and you see the cards. We had to go and look for the cards ourselves and to actually practice them. But these guys, whoa, they were good. I mean, Willis, I, I was in awe when I heard Willis play the first time, Willis Williams, who was our, our arranger and, and keyboardist. And he used to control the drum machine at first and I took over that. And um, so it was easy, CP. It was really, really easy. I was a lucky person to be around people like them. And you didn't have to shout at people. What you did have shouting, eh? because differences of opinion and so, when people are good, they have different methods and they have different things in the head. When the band start to get the shouting match is when we start to create for ourselves because everybody has a difference in the way you're creating now. So that's different. If you're playing somebody else's tune, you agree because the people play those lines, you have to play them over back, you know? And in, in St. Vincent, I'll tell you, if you play a tune like, if you leave me now, you take away the very best part. You have to sing it exactly. And you have to play those parts like pity dang dang day dang pity dang. So people looking, they dancing. Like, oh, I hope Brian going to play that part in because that's one the record. If you don't play it, you're into a good band. You understand? So that was a difference. When we had our real problems now is when is when we were going to create. And that is where the back and all started. And the test. Because, because I remember a couple of times coming up by you there. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that. And in the downstairs, they were where you used to have the band practicing and thing. I, I used to come up with one of your cousins. Oh, Freddy. you always fool around one of my cousins. No, no, Freddie Alexander, we used to work <laughs> together, chat man. Oh, 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 there's a man. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got no, no. CP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Freddie. Freddie is my is my cousin, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I used to have this pass by there. I, mean, yeah, I used yes. to have I used to have man band something like if it's mine. Yes, I remember. Yeah, I remember good. Yeah, you're true. It's true. You passed on that downstairs a couple of times. And yeah, true. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so don't, don't think I don't think I don't know. I know I'm not thinking that you do even know I know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We had some bands. Well, bands, all bands, no matter how good you see them playing on stage, they have the differences. And don't tell me they don't cost. They do have back and all in it. But once you get on the stage, you're professional, you come to do a job. And people do it. And we are all friends too. You know? We we were like family in, in a we were institution in touch. Not only family, we're institution because a lot of people, a lot of players, a lot of vocalists went to our band, Pat Rage went to our band, Golden a Girl and Donald Nichols. I think she's in Canada, they're up there with you. Um, um Sparrow Duncan's daughter, Sandra, was in our band. Um, Tani, a guy named Tani. A lot of people, when Dings left, we had to get other vocalists. Then is when I feel came in and replaced because um Cherry Inns on the base, he he had um migrated to America. And we got we got now, we are getting now a man who could sing and could play the bass. You don't normally have that. It, you case they have a band where a man is playing the bass and can sing. It's a very it's an instrument where you have to play notes and concentrate. And I feel it's a great, it's a <laughs> I tell you, we had some geniuses in our band. Well, except me. We had geniuses <laughs> in our band. I tell you, because I feel was a damn good, is a damn good singer and bass player. He multitasked. Yeah, he, I think he come from such of us back or somewhere around that area. Yeah, I know you want to claim him up by you up there. That's true. He came, he came up. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, claim your boy, man. He's very good. All right, in case you just join us, we're doing uh, an interview or a conversation with Mr. Brian Paper Alexander, I'm Moulton Sears alongside C.P. Borg. Um, Brian, yeah, come, come to uh, what you just said there, of course, a, a countryman always replaces a countryman, so I think I feel um, replace uh, a dinks there. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and Cherry was the bass man, too. So it's two people. Mm -hmm. He come, he two, one replacing two, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but come back to touch again, man, because, and you said it, because I remember when I was a little boy, you know, I heard all kinds of things about touch, and just to watch the band play was just a joy, you know, and and I think there was one time when they were comparing it to um, Burning Flames of Antigua, if I'm right, they even said that you guys were using the, the 
the old instrument from Broad in Flames. So I don't know how true that one was, but that's what we heard when, you know. <laughs> like like you said, there were so many things said about touch because you guys were so good. Yeah, well, um, you had the, the little things in the background there uh, that people would say, but of course, we we always think that I never heard of Born in Flames when we started. I never heard of them. So we couldn't know what they have. But, but if you look at our instrument and look at theirs, it's just far different. Um, Born in Flames, with their, their drum machine, there were some little things named Al Alesis. While we were, we were using the, the top of the line drum machine at the time, a uh, Lin drum. Lin is a man who invented a drum machine. It's big, a very big drum machine, professional computerized. And so I, I don't think that part with barring instruments, they don't sound right. It, 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 just somebody rum mm. shop talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just that if you like this in life, you know, if you're not good, no one talks about you, you know? So I guess yeah. you guys are so good that people had all kind of myth about, you know, what you guys are doing to be so different, you know? But yeah. we, I mean, so that the instrument made a difference and the musicians made a difference. And, and you guys were creative. Um, to a point where, um, let me get into that now, that you were eating up all the road match titles year after year. Yes, um, we we kind of had a formula in a sense in that um, we know what the people like. They like slogans, they like, they like village songs. What I say, village songs. Commerce in a village. CPU mm -hmm. will tell you about commerce in a village. Somebody take with somebody, woman, somebody boot somebody. Somebody um, love the wife, bad, bad, and you know all our songs. Even the cat, the cat. You, we know we went to Eddie Grant's studio when um and we saw um Eddie Grant's wife. She had so much cats, like fifty something cats, maybe more. So hmm. I feel say, boy, that next year road match. So I say, what are you going to say now? You're going to be rude. <laughs> no, but I feel. I feel know how to um, write lyrics, so so he 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 write he wrote a story, a village story again. He said, mm -hmm. um, "This woman in a village, tell him must come and mind, take care of the cats them, and every day he had to feed the cat, give them milk and whatever, and so a double on tongue, you know what that is, and double meaning songs, and that, that's what we we were all really, and we always stayed with women." Men is no use in, in the entertainment <laughs> industry. True, true. Telling the truth. Who are of use are little children. That's who you that's who you always target. Little children and women. Men don't buy nothing. I, really and truly, check no, it out. You're right, you're right. In entertainment, men buy nothing. They won't, they don't even want to buy food, some of us. And um, and so. The woman is the manager of the house who decides what entertainment going to be like in, in that house and who going to buy what. So our paraphernalia, which includes jerseys and so, is not going to be bought by a man. A woman will buy it for a man. True, and that's true. A, so you target those people so you always dig them up in songs. Mind your picnic. Because a lot of men don't want to mind the picnic. And the woman, you get the woman to love you, right? You see? Yeah, boy, them men looking off we. Touch is a good band. I love them. Where we, where we spending with money, we spend it by touch. Because they're looking mm -hmm. out for people, you hear this thing? And they're saying, women and whatever. And we never, um, like nowadays songs, my brother, this, the songs nowadays are really denigrating women. Talking of the parts of a woman and mm -hmm. making them, you know, they feel like sure. they have something to eat in a plate and all them kind of thing. We never did that. We don't do that. We we big up women, and and even though we might we might talk about parts of the body, right? Mm -hmm. We do it in a wrong about nice, decent way that even them will accept. Mm -hmm. Even they would accept it, accept it, you know. So so that that's the story about touch and getting road matches. Yeah, yeah, and 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 really and truly, that's I think that's why it's one of my all time favorite band ever because. When you check the stories again, when you check back off, I used to just lie down and and digest the words from back off. It's it's a real story, you know, woman. So let me ask you, was it a true story or or is it just a friction that 
that you guys just brought up because you said the cat story was almost like a a, a, a true story. So. The cat story was true. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, I feel that not, this is Cherry. Cherry Inns was in the band at time for back off, which I think really we were cheated out of. We won that road match that year. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't give us it. So they made, made, made up the next year by giving us, that's what the people say. They made up the next year by give, with, giving us a jam them, but jam them well deserved. We, we just go through like a, yeah, a yeah, knife, yeah. through butter yeah. with that one. There was no other band even close, other other artists even close with, with jam them, right? But back off, I thought we had won the road match that year. They didn't give us it. Um, jam, um, back off was a story created by Cherry Inns, our first bass player. And he, mm -hmm. he used to write for the band too. He wrote a lot, a lot of songs. And uh, he and I, we, we started writing for the band. And then when he left, I feel took over. So we were, I tell you, we were blessed. We were mm -hmm. blessed because when one leave, when one left the band, another one came who was just as good. And some people might right argue, in. maybe better, you know? Mm -hmm. But I ain't going to see anybody who's better in touch. Right. You right. know, because I know everybody. Did they do their part? Did mm -hmm. we didn't have no weakling? If you want to count the weakling, most honestly, it will have to be me. <laughs> no, nah, Brian, man. No, nah, man. No, I'm, tell, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Brian, but... with, musicians mm -hmm. agree with you because I am telling you that I was the weakest musician in touch. I'm straightforward okay. like that. I was an organizer, I I a strategist, and um and a showman because I jump up and play. I could have, mm. I could have dub or rap and so on. So I would have liked the live wire in the band. But most of the other guys were cool, except for Godfrey. Godfrey was not cool. Godfrey and I were about the same temperament and whatever. I feel you will to talk to I feel is like pulling out teeth. It take long. Louis, he's <laughs> funny when you get to know him, you know. Mm. But I feel and Will is a, a deadly cool. They don't talk. Cherry Inns don't talk. Dings Johnson don't talk. Those are you know. So that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, yes, maybe you're right. It's it's complimentary to the band that you were you were the weakest link. So so it doesn't mean that you were bad. It's just you know I get you. I feel you. It just means that the band was so good that Brian Alexander was the weakest link. So it's yes, still I'm, one of the I'm biggest. Being honest, yeah. They will tell you that too. Mm -hmm. They will tell you. I mean, I after years and so you you develop your skill and much better. And what I'm known for is it perhaps one of the better rhythm keyboardists in St. Vincent. Yeah, because I created a lot of rhythms, yes. I, I, I could brag a little bit. But um, as a full all wrong musician, the other guys take the cake because they mm. are full all wrong. Willis is trained. Godfrey is trained properly. I feel is. So they have to take the cake. I am being honest here. So in... When when you guys brought out back off and you said you should have one road match, do you remember who won road match that year? I I I um let me see something. I think I could go back on something and see who it is. Um I think it's I think it was um oh yeah, it was our friend poser. It was our friend uh. poser. And listen, ironically. Poser record, Poser did that song with us. And the same <laughs> drum beat for Back Off. Mm. We gave him that drum beat. Mm. You know? So he won us that year with Mountain Mimuma, I think. And people were thinking it's a political move because the song the song was was throwing some egg on um, what he named Face, um, Pierre Campbell's face. Mm -hmm. You must think me left me mountain, me mama. Yes, so, yes, yes. I remember yeah. that. So there was because he at that time they saw him as a, a dictator in that he didn't want people to have black hole and yeah. all sorts of laws. He just wanted to remember? change the rule, change most of the rules. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. So suppose I went after him. So what he did now, <laughs> he was there to show people that he is not scared, he's not worried about this. In fact, mm -hmm. hear what he said. I, I have a recording somewhere you now. He said an, in an interview that that song is road march in, in my house. That's before <laughs> road march was judging. Mm. <laughs> so you have a man close to the government saying something like that, you know? Right. But right. we didn't we didn't mind um, Poser getting the road march. He's our friend, 
and mm. he had elements in him there that we he had gotten from us where Willis had, was helping him arrange and I give them the drum drum the drum part you know and and so and he went to Frankie and I think and recorded but we never used to record at that we didn't record we didn't have a student at that time yeah so mm. that's what what it is that's how we knew we were cheated out you know but we didn't we want we didn't mind we didn't mm. mind so so you guys anger okay so you guys played for Beckett or or in Asterix, um you 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 back Beckett in a couple of songs in Astory. Um and Beckett, I read one one place where Beckett was so angry or or upset with, that you guys were just killing the road match and you guys were getting road match after road match that screw, no screw was geared towards you guys. In fact, your name specifically mentioned in the song. What was the error riff between Touch and Beckett? Not that I'm a musical riff, though. No, I, I, I won't. Uh, I, not a personal riff. No, you're right. Um, mm. But remember, he when somebody get accustomed to something, they're eating like when they get a dog egg to suck. It is. Uh, if a dog suck egg in country terms, it will mm. continue to suck egg until it die. So he was getting so much, um, so much um, road matches. Beckett, he has nothing against us because actually he's the, the family for, for um, two Willis, you know? Mm -hmm. But he will use all our strategies to try and get his road match. And he has a right to sing on us. Mm -hmm. um, singing on us at that time when we were so popular was a bad idea, really and truly. It was. <laughs> it was a real bad idea. <laughs> because I tell you, Touch had the public eating out of the, their hands, you know? And um, when we say something, that was it. We were, we were, what we have over Beckett is that we had a band. We right. had to go and hire one. Mm -hmm. So we had a band and we were on the road. But uh, strange enough, when he said, buy a steel band, buy a this, we really learned that from Beckett. And if he's listening, I hope he's not mad, but it's because of fact. We see Beckett bringing band, steel bands on the road to help to market his song which is open for everybody to do. So mm -hmm. we did that. We did that too, learning that from him and others, like Sosu and whoever else. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a very good marketing tool. So we use it. And we didn't stop anybody from doing what we are doing. Right? right. And um, to, those songs helped us really and truly to get more popular. Mm -hmm. Like, um, uh, me having no school was nothing really. People just had to me in the road, yes. But uh, I am popular now because people, some who didn't know me now, that's the man exactly. who knows school. <laughs> because I, at first, when I was younger, I thought it was a compliment to the band that he's using the band name and I got my bridal links and they're looking for school. And then I, 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 you know, I thought it was a compliment until, to be honest with you, I'm trying to do a research on you and I saw that it was like Beckett was really happy that Touch was getting everything, and 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 you're right. It's not only Beckett because Touch almost changed the, the concept of the way they do road match because people were saying, "Oh, it's not fair because Touch was a band; they're gonna play only their music," you know. Yes, but um, that too we learned from those the masters, and, and, and because if you, what what was the rules that the criteria for the judging is that um, the amount of songs you you the amount of times your song play on the road, right? They didn't put in things like on radio. They didn't put in other things. On the road, uh, on, in the park, in the park when the mass bands are there, mm -hmm. when the mass bands come up, they do choose a song, isn't it? They choose a song right. to carry them across the park. Yes, yes. So all that has been checked in our time. So if you were to have a band, mm -hmm. yes, you're, we have an advantage in that we would, we would, could lap the tongue two, three times per day. Black Sun mm -hmm. did it after. They lapped the, band, the, the road, Exodus, all the bands did it. All right, well, Becker didn't have a band. He had one higher band. But he mm -hmm. had, he used to have steel bands and higher bands too. So I don't think it's a, when he spoke about it, it was, it's, it's all in his right to say something like that because he was feeling the pinch from not getting the road match at the time. And it's mm -hmm. nothing if somebody used what they have to get what they want. So he's right, mm -hmm. you know? 
-hmm. no hard feelings. Yeah, yeah, man, and, and touch was right, but but you know, I I would like the younger generation to really realize, you know, what music was like in those days, you know, because like everybody waiting for touch to come out, and you wait for Beckett to come out, you wait for Susan to come out. You're just waiting for, for, for these big guns to come out. Because kind of, um music at that time was was real music, like you say. Everybody not only waiting for this song, you know, we're waiting to hear the story, what story they're coming out with with the song. Yes, um, very mm -hmm. important. That's the, the, the difference there right now with from the 80s, 70s, 80s, come straight up to, well, I would say from the 60s because um, then you had Lord Hawk and them with Upani Bunje and right in the slum and, and songs that have, have um, a story behind it and a hook at the, time, at, at the same time. And what people... I would like to see the 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 the, the um younger yeah, you know, folks nowadays yeah. do is to to do that same thing. It's nothing is wrong with it. Have a storyline, have your mm -hmm. your um hook, so everybody could be involved. There are people in the church which sing some of those songs. Yeah. True, 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 true. Yeah, true. There, you know. And mm -hmm. so, but some songs now they can't go there. People won't, don't want to be associated with hearing them. It's just a rhythm. Mm -hmm and four or five of them singing on it. They're not creative. You have to be creative. Nobody in St. Vincent could get anywhere with where the music is at now. None. They would not mm -hmm. get anywhere. If you notice, who made it, who made it big in St. Vincent when they were young? Um, Kevin Little. That's a song mm -hmm. done by, by um, Adrian, by Adrian, Adrian Bailey. Yeah. Hear the music behind that. Hear the music. Beckett, when yeah. Beckett do something, it stays around. True, Beckett had true. songs in a movie. The mm. Deep, you know, you can't get anywhere with them. Bang, 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 bang. It won't go nowhere. I'm putting true, it true. to you. You might think I'm a dictator and so on. No, nah, man. No, nah, because but, you're the teacher. Listen, you're the, you're the teacher. You have to teach the, the youth and let them listen to, to what you're saying. They might not take it in, but you, you got to show them you know, what real music is like, because I grew up in around, I was fortunate to grow up around the era where, where you guys came out. So, you know, tell it, tell it to them as it is, man. Yeah, because listen, music is not about, you, you might fluke a thing. One song might come out and you manage to gr grab the ID, the, 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 the public, the audience. Yes, one. But more songs that make it to the top. Down to who let the dogs out. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> That, that <laughs> song made it big because people could align themselves to it and have a story in a kind of a sense. And it, it's a little jovial. Who let the dogs out? Woof, woof, woof. Mm. That was one of the biggest West Indian song ever, you know? And it was mm. done by a Vincent, and I hope you know that. Eh? Roger yeah, Gold mm. is the one who arranged that song. Yeah. It's a Vinci. So, so mm. people nowadays, I would like them to know that this rhythm thing that's stealing or using people's rhythm on, on the, um, from the World Wide Web and YouTube, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to get no respect. You need to go out there and create your own beats and your own and, and, and lyrics that would appeal to the whole world, not to a cross section of people who want the block drinking strong rum and 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 I'm tr tracing it with another strong rum it, you know it, it it ain't going to make it it would not and if you all want to challenge me you could give me one person in your all cut in all a group in who have made it pass back way none of them i don't know if any kevin little make it skinny fabulous made it because he has lyrics right he has lyrics and even his rhythm are a little different too because he has an arranger he goes sure. to a man, a man Barnwell, and he fix up his own rhythm. He scares these things on people's rhythm, you know? So even if I ain't so like up their kind of trend of music, skinny fabulous trend of music, he is doing something that he's creating something that is his own, and he, his lyrics are, he has powerful lyrics. Really and truly, do it a bit yeah. fast so me, who's an old man, I know. I can't um, <laughs> keep up with them. The lyrics are going, you know, but it's good lyrics. When you slow them down, I could, I hear in them. Good lyrics, well thought out lyrics. Sure, you sure. know, even if they're vulgar, vulgar is not bad really mm -hmm. too, you know. 
Mm -hmm. The most vulgar person I've ever listened to, mm -hmm. only that he hid it a lot, was Sparrow. Mm -hmm. Sparrow. Crazy, crazy is a vulgar artist too. Yes. Be Beckett, could be Beckett could be vulgar to you, but the, the way he puts across the lyrics, it's, it's hidden vulgarity. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's so a melody because it's yourself. double on tongue. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I mean, wherever he ever lizard going up somebody's foot and it disappear. Wherever he <laughs> bang, bang, Lulu, who Lulu mm -hmm. gone away, Lulu ride a bicycle, seed of made of glass, and every time, whatever, it happened. Mm -hmm. And those kind of things are really, really vulgar. And, and, and um, but nice people love them, you know, mm -hmm. because it's it kind of a, it was hidden. It was hidden in a sense. Right. And, and before Sip jumps in, let me just add to it that if if a testimony of what you said is that for a band like Touch, even Asterix and those older bands, you can sit back and listen to the whole album and just enjoy it, even even decades after, you know. So. Big up yourself again, Brian, and, and, and Touch and, and Asterix and all the bands in the past who have really put on the Vinci thing on, on the show. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. You listen to the Fresh Green Song. You listen to Vinci Internet Radio. Very interesting interview with and um, discussion with my former schoolmate, Mr. Brian Paper Alexander. Brian, one thing I must we must mention <laughs> the bands disappearing from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I mean, I, in my days, I think there were about 12, 13 bands. What, what, what do you think is, is causing the disappearance of bands right now in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Well, I, I wouldn't want to think that we are unique in that, in that regard. In that um, what is very glaring in St. Vincent, the most glaring, because in other islands like St. Lucia, where they have a tourist, tourism industry, ours is almost non-existent with, ju with just you having a few a few um, tourist ships coming in and you don't have entertainment for them. Well, let me don't go to the polit political side. But um, what happened is that the, a lot of groups, that same tourism thing I mentioned there, what caused it in a sense, in that some of our better players uh, um, would mi had migrated and went to play on tourist ships. Uh, the tourist ships were collecting but taking musicians from these islands, um, St. Vincent being one. And um, so you have a breakup of bands for that reason. Then another reason is that um, the bands, to pay a band in my time, and even now, well, even now more so, is very expensive because some of these guys had like uh, 12 people in a band. Touch was five, right? Whereas the touch, would have, touch would have existed if we were still around um, to play on the circuit. But some of these bands, they were having like too much players. It was economical for, for um, the club, club owners and so on to, to hire them. So they went to the DJ. The DJ, um, they, uh, some of these DJs, uh, just like if you're hearing a band because they would hit tune after tune and mix it in and have these new, new um, news decks that they could slip over tune and do their own little mixes. And it, it, they sung live and they had the mic too. And uh, you know, they have, they have um, people who, DJs who had the mic and they would might even sing if you, if, you, if you swear, they would sing too. So it was a competition between band and DJ afterwards because of economics. Now what I think band should have done there themselves, some of them should have opened their own clubs. You know, but we weren't around. Uh, and people in Simmons tend to follow one another. One snow cone cat come in Simmons, and man, man, they, they call him snow cone, right? He, he went up to grammar school with one snow cone cat on Wednesday. Friday, it had five snow cone cats up there. When there were no snow cone cats before since that. You hear what I'm saying? So a man named snow cone, he's gone. He's a mulatto kind of a looking guy. I could remember I'm watching him now. He brought snow cone cat in St. Vincent. So people, it look as if they follow the crowd. It's just like now inside Kingston, the Huskers. They have a million in Kingston selling to one another too. One coming down and must say, I make a money. And the whole country come down, right? So they always want to have a leader to follow. But I think bands should have gotten 
the wind of that. This thing is not getting economical for, for the club owners and they're not hiring us. So let's do our own fet. Let's either have our own club or let's, let's um, rent a club and have our own fet. And the, the, the price that it do is my money to put in my pocket. But nobody never thought of doing that. So people will follow. And I'm sure they are doing that in places like St. Lucia and Barbados where people are conscientious. But Simmons is a little different. And um, so now all the band, most of the members gone on, on um, tourist ships. And now you have no body to play for us here, except for when Carnival come wrong. We, we must stop a band. By the way, Touch will be playing for Carnival eh, in a show named Evo. We always play for it. So we'll be playing for a show named Evo again. So that's how, that's how it is. And the, and the, bands, are, the bands are not thinking. And, and now two people, people are not, I don't think they're attracted to music as such. I, I once asked in a, in a newspaper article that the powers that be um, make music compulsory in school. You must learn music. You must learn music academic in the real way, not like how I learn. And, and, um, and um, everybody should do it. At a point, like say, farm tree, or at least up to farm tree. If you feel you want to go on, you go on and do a doctorate or whatever. But you don't have that because music, the scientists prove that music enhances your academic studies. It go hand in hand. And, and to, so now we don't have as much musicians as such. Um, the police forces who bring up most of our musicians and they are like um, trumpet players, air players, you know what I mean? They have a band to that back up the Kai so the, So they're doing a pretty good job still. They're holding their own. But what, what it should be in the schools, they should have the compulsory music being taught. Yeah, because remember, St. Vincent and the Grenadines produced some very good musicians in, in the days. I mean, a lot of them used to be migrate overseas to play with different bands. And I'll take you up on that. Um, most of the times, and I notice here, even, even in Canada here, one of the things that I notice is Two things I'll tell you, and, and music is involved. In most of the schools, if you want to play sports, your academic has to be at a certain level. And also, all the schools here, music is part of the curriculum. So, and, it's, and also they use it as competition. So you'll find schools competing against other schools with, with a live musical band. So I think that's something that as you say, we can um, start implementing St. Vincent and the Grenadines because we need to change the culture. And in order to us to produce top musicians, which somebody can make a living from, we have to change the culture. Yeah. And yeah, I agree with you. We, we were the um, where people were other countries. Even Barbados used to come here. Some, some big bands in Barbados would come down here and, and um, take our musicians, hire them, take them out of the police force, carry them up. You know, and, and that's how it is. Um, St. Vincent's always been the, the place where musicians are manufactured. <laughs> I don't know if I could use that word. Yeah, because I, I remember my days, my days in school, there were so many bands, you know, passing through Josh, Tom, Byra, even Connery, where they have that... Um, bullpen. Thing, bullpen. Yeah, bullpen, yeah. So, yeah. And, and now you're not, you're not seeing it. it, it it's hardly anything in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So that's why sometimes we have this program is trying to reflect on the past in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Try to see if we could ignite something to make people uh, realize, well, hey, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has produced some wonderful musician. Where are they now, you know? So we, we, need, we need to carry this out. Yeah, I could, if you could permit me to gloss over something. Um, you spoke earlier on about 15 bands, and you're correct. I think even more. Because on Drin, we had we, we Easter was very special to us on August Monday in our days. It was a holiday. And every constituency in St. Vincent, if not most of the villages, had a, 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 a fete and dance. It's the only, I have never heard of a fete and dance in, in our time now. Fete and dance. Okay, the fete starts. Our fet starts at two o'clock when you don't eat and finishes at six. You have to go home. Your mommy say, come home now. <laughs> school children have to go home. And from eight o'clock to whenever is the is the is the um dance for big people. 
So big mm -hmm. people. This will happen in every constituency. And I was saying, if not, most of the villages in St. Vincent. So you go down Chateau, you have a band playing. You come up to Baga, Barley, a band playing. You go to Leyu, another band playing. When you go Ketel's now by Philo's disco, a band is playing there. When you come into town, well, don't talk, talk about town. You have a band by Hadden Hotel. You have a band by Olive's Hotel. You have a band by Peace Mo. You have a band by Crow's Nest. You have a band by Aquatic Club. You know? And so. And then they go up by Sheep and by you. You go up by Summer Place. Then you go by Spotlight Stadium. Then you go in the school in Sandy Bay. Then I never heard of, oh, we're having a fete in those days because electricity wasn't in those days at that. I, I, I'm not so sure. I'm never, we never been to there. But Greg's by the guy Sintelay. And so everywhere and all his bands, even if the band was a, a four piece, there was a band, or even if it was a steel band. So that's the difference now. It's, it's really sad. And we had so many good musicians, you know. I wish those days could come back, even if so for the musicians, you know, that we could have them available. And I, I remember a couple of bands out of George Strong after Tuesdays, Maguire's, and a couple more bands around, around that time. And they used to do well. Yeah, you know? Fl and Flames in Bible, Friends in Mespo, um, the guy Volca that, those guys Volcano. in Greg's. Volcano. Volcano, mm -hmm. right. Uh, and then you had um, Signal, um, Exodus, mm -hmm. you had Polyphonics, you had a Revolution, you had... Um, um and voice i had so much bands i named it on my page and it was it came up to i think it was 150 something bands in all wow, wow. yeah, yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe that because when i start checking bands i realized there's so many and there were so many good musicians too even um i remember in my days when um like revolution was around you know Pumi Lewis, one of, one of the better bass players, I think, in, in St. Vincent, the Grenadines, in my opinion. And yeah. there's, a lot, there's a lot of keyboard players that we don't even know about, that like Corwin Morris, you know. Ch one Chinky of these, Farrell. Yeah, one Freddy of these days, have, we'll have to bring you back and you have to go through some, um, you know, musicians that get you some to refresh your memory and we have to go to some musician of the past because a lot of music, good musicians pass through St. Vincent that a lot of people don't know about. Yes, it's true. Um, and, and in every constituency, every village, you had musicians, people self-taught and people who, who learned by music. And you go, well, like, you'll have the colonial people like my father. He, uh, he never knew I was going to, I was doing music. If he knew I was doing music, I'd have to do it the right way. I went and te I thought, you know how our parents were. Well, no, yeah. Brian, you're not going to do it like that. I'd have to, to do it the right way. So I hid my musical skills from him. And I did it on, in the slide. And well, that might have been a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 think, I, I think we're going to think about it. And um, we definitely have to give these musicians, the past musicians that a lot of people don't know about, uh, bring the name up and, and, and let something. So one of these days, I'll go get back to you. And we're definitely going to put a program together, maybe bring up one or two other people in. and. We're really going to be looking at some serious musicians that passed with St. Vincent and the Grenadines because the name must be mentioned. Thank you. Somebody, somebody. All right, we're talking to Mr. Brian Paper Alexander um, about his musical contribution to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, Touch Asterix, those were his uh, two previous bands that he he made a contribution with. Um, Brian, who, who, who did you look up to musically um, for inspiration when you were growing up in terms of being in a band? Well, most of our, we, it was foreign bass. We always had records, you know. Um, every, almost every household had a, what you call a gramophone, a record player. And if my brother, he would buy, he would buy records when he was a teacher, um, Freddie Alexander, teacher, and then later on, a, um, a metalist minister. He, like, he likes records, so he would go down to, to um, 
music center and purchase records. So I would um I would um steal a chance when he's not there and take his records and play them. And uh, I um and that's where my music thing started. And but for influence, actual influence, um, a lot of musicians, all the keyboard players, like Gregory Bacchus, I looked at, Cohen Morris, like your CP said. Um, I looked up to a lot of people, but Frankie was, well, he, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was say, like, no, say no more with Frankie. Yeah, yeah you couldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't, oh, this guy is a <laughs> genius. And, you know, mm. and he had done so, a lot of things he had done so quietly that people in St. Vincent don't even know. You know, True. He, you know, he arranged for the whole, entire Caribbean in change soca in a very subtle way. People don't even know the touches that are made in soca to give it that little rev. Mm. Frank is responsible for it. Yeah, and not only, not only St. Vincent, not only for, for Vincentian. No, it's for everyone. Whole, yeah, exactly. The whole of uh, the region. Yeah, I think he's even more respected in Trinidad than St. Vincent. Mm. Because yeah. you mentioned Frankie people. Frankie is a, I don't know what to say. Frankie is just <laughs> the pinnacle of, mm -hmm. of a musician. A ranger, he's just real good. And, and yeah. there are other people too. Um, Cowan Mars is a real good arranger too. Then we had um, then we had the horn players. But I never look up to, I look up to them as a musician, but I more would stick to what I do, which is keyboards. And so I look at people like, I couldn't look at Frankie, but I heard of him. So people like Gregory Backus, even Willis Williams, although he's younger than me, I, um, he helped me a lot, you know? He been mm -hmm. around him. Let me tell you something about people, about music. People might say, yeah, you're playing. All of us are playing together. And um, they might say, oh, you, you might feel you're getting good, but you wouldn't realize you're getting good because of somebody who's around you. I have, I have arranged songs, you know, I'm arranging. I'm in a studio right now, as you all could see. That's, I'm in a studio. It's my studio. And um, I do arrange a lot of arrangements for, for um, Kaisonians too. But when I play, when I, when, I, when I play, I am playing Willis without even knowing because he was around me. I right. took Willis too, maybe. We might be playing a rhythm that sounds uh, similar to me because I'm... Uh, He's around me. So we rub off on one another, you know? Wow. Some of his phrasings I take, and you might say, wait, Brian, you script that. But I didn't do it intentionally. It, it's just <laughs> in my ear, revolving all the time. And one day I get a chance and I play it and didn't realize, wait, that Willis played something like that at the time. You know, so we wow. enhance one another, you know, by being around and listening. That's why I brought up the record first, because record playing that, when you listen to these players overseas, you know, like Mambo di Bango, Mama Kung, Mama Sa, Mama Kung, Mama Sa. You know, I don't know if you all remember that song. And that was a song, was a hit in St. Vincent for almost 10 years. People didn't stop. And it was an African player. And we used to sing that song and don't know what the hell we're singing because it's African. Uh, Mambo, Gandhi, Kunga, Hiki, Kanga. I didn't sing anything, but you just want to fall into the rhythm, you know? So I just would like to mention that though. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's interesting. Um, so since we're on that though, let me ask you this: How how do you think with um, how or what's your feeling on the um, Afro beats as pertaining to soca with the adoption of Afro, Afro beats into soca? What's your take on that? Well, I could give you one word: black, <laughs> black, back to back to roots, <laughs> black. No matter, there's nothing. When it's playing in the Carib played in the Caribbean and Africa, that's that is a copy. Mm -hmm. It's in our DNA. Now the Africans are playing high life forever. You know that. You know the high life beat, the high life beat. Mm -hmm. Listen to it. It's Calypso. We brought yeah. it down here. True. We true. brought that down here. And let me tell you something. With all due respect to the other races, black people. Are the artists of art because we True. decide what happens. True. Now, look, look, you have a little country like Jamaica, have so much influence so much. on America. So Why? Why do <laughs> you think that? Hmm. We control 
I mean, sure. with all due respect to you, other races, black people control music, sports, even academics. Now we are mm -hmm. we are challenging them, and they might you might hold us down for being astronauts, astronauts and scientists, etc. But we are doing our best, and we are filtering to one or two of us going through because they say let uh, let, let you are two black man and thing. But really, it should be more than two they let in two. People who are qualified and not getting there. But they can't hold us down with the arts. And everything that we get into with, the, with, with, with sports too, we control in. Because sure. look at golf. Who would know that a black man? Well, well who, a one who says that he's not black, but we know he, he's part black. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but, <laughs> To compliment what you just said there also, um, there was just a story with the Jamaican bobsledge team, um, racism with the black people in the bobsledge team because they know, and even you have that in hockey as well, they know if when, when the black man goes into it, he excel above and beyond. You know? He's going to control. Uh, yeah, so, so, so uh, I mean... American we, football you know was white. Mm -hmm. They let in one black man, and that was it. Yeah. His basketball was white. You let in a couple of black men that we are it. We we the creators of everything. You can't hold us down. We built we built the pyramids. And listen, I'm not racist. Eh? My mother is white. Eh? Yeah, but there are things that you know or or we have to know and right. we have to accept. Um, right. You know. Yeah. There's a mar they're marveling up to know how pyramids are built. But they, then they were built by Egyptians. Who are Egyptians, really and truly? They white. They, I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And they come from the African continent. You know, people don't want to say the Middle East is part of Africa. They don't mm. want to say it. But you see how it's made up there. It, it mm. was part of it. You know that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So with the high life and the music, with the, like what you tell me there, that coming on from the Afrobeat, no, don't, don't, don't um, spend any time on that. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's black. It's black. Let me use it. True. Yeah. True. Um, coming back to you with when uh, when you talked about um, the bands and and you 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 mentioned that it's um, economical reasons could be you know one of the major factor why bands are disappearing. But um, if I have to if I have to go back, you guys I don't think you guys are really making a lot of money locally when you played, but you toured, you know, across the world. So, you know, for the sake of people who don't know the advantages of being in a band, I mean, it has a disadvantage, but we're going to look at the advantages, you know, tell us some of the places that you toured and, and where you guys enjoyed playing in your playing days. Okay, well, if you start in the Caribbean, only one place you've never been to in the Caribbean is Jamaica. Uh, we never got a foothold in Jamaica because, you know, Jamaica is predominantly reggae. Um, reggae. reggae. Although we play reggae too, but part time, you know, we I we wouldn't say we're that strong. We never made a real. We really was one reggae song, round two, but we never. We're not a reggae band, so we never got in there. Mm -hmm. So that's the Caribbean done. So you go to America. We go mm -hmm. to America almost every year. As soon as we get the road match, straight in America and Canada. So and we talk in Canada is Montreal and Toronto. So we played those two places. We played in a in a in a hall in um in England, which is a highlight in our in our career. Um, its name is Pickett's Lock, and we played there for the government of Saint Vincent. Um, I think it was the twelfth the twelfth anniversary of the independence, and ninety one I think, and we are just releasing a song named um, Sweet Music and Me. And um, Hiki, that year we got road match with um, Move Your Front. So they called us up, they took us up there, and we played for a record crowd, a crowd of 5,000. That's what the, 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 um, man, uh, the, the managers of the, build, of the building said, that the 5,000 people there. And Boy George, who was very popular in England, played mm -hmm. the day before, the night before, and he got only 3,000 something and the man was asking where's this band from well, <laughs> could they get more people than boy george mm -hmm. and um 
you know that that's how and we met the guy and so he said he wanted to bring us but he never brought us and um so so that's there we went into various counties is what they call in england right we played mm -hmm. in reading i don't yeah. know if reading is a county yeah correct me if i'm wrong yeah yeah the kind of counties yeah right and we played in in um seven sisters and all we played in england okay and we played the doggies doggies disco which is a very popular disco in in in, in london then we went we did, did, did a tour we went to germany we went to germany when they were just taking down that wall so when we went there that day the the um if you check it back that day the guards from russia was just leaving so we mm -hmm. just barely got you without they mm -hmm. having to search our passport so we went from belgium straight into germany without showing anybody our passport Sorry. wow yeah. <laughs> that, so that's how i could remember that eh? mm -hmm. and um then we went to so we went to belgium we went to germany and england that was the tours up there and the caribbean those are the places that oh we went to Colombia for festival where some bees nearly kill us. And we and when you're talking about playing for people, mm -hmm. um CP and the gentleman, what's your name again? Molten, Molten. Molten. Molten, when I tell you, in the craziest people I've ever played for are people from Colombia. They <laughs> it's just like if everybody's suicidal. Now we played for a crowd way over a hundred thousand. It's no joke. Wow. They didn't go there for us. It was a festival. They go for everybody. The Jamaicans mm -hmm. carried up. They took up Mighty Diamonds. I don't know if you all have heard of yeah, that. Yeah, really yeah of, course. of Mighty course. Mighty Diamonds. Diamond. So we we were the, and then they brought a band from Trinidad. Oh, I think it's Song Revolution. A band came up there and we and them. And, um, and then they had this Caribbean festival. These people will make pyramids of themselves. They go on one another's shoulders. <laughs> and to up, like about 15 up, you know, 15 people up. Wow. You understand what's happening? You hold on to one another's shoulder and they go up, you step up on your shoulder and another man step up on your head and up and up. That's what they, these are crazy people. And then people from below will pelt a bottle for the man at the top so they could fall down. And then he, wee, 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 the ambulance, and that's what they call party. They are crazy well, people. But I'm just giving you that joke by the side. Mm, but yeah. they appreciate they appreciate music. Beckett's song was a top song up there because he came up there before. I think it's teaser. He came, he went there before us. So he had paved the way for other artists. I've never heard of any band going there afterward, us. And um Colombo was a great session for us. And for for crowd, uh, is the biggest crowd we have ever played for ever, and um, except for the bees, one, the bees, uh, there was a swarm of bees that went through the crowd, and we had a little problem there. I got stung. They tried to carry me in the hospital. We nearly couldn't play, and then I got a doctor and he fixed me up. And because the bee, let me tell you, that is no joke, bee. Uh, two, three of them sting, stung me, and I was dizzy. So it was it was a problem there. But it was a, the Colombia was a highlight in also in our musical career. So that's about so, it, where we went. We went little islands like Tatola, St. Croix, mm -hmm. and, and so on. We played in Peter's Island. I don't know if you know that island. Peter's Island is yeah, an island just, yeah. just off. Tatola, yeah. It's St. Croix or Tatola. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we played in St. Lucia. We played for their carnival. We, we played um, Grenada. Yeah, all the islands, all. So, so if I have to play the devil's advocate, then there is opportunity even locally. You, it's not um, you, you don't make a lot of money, and you do good music. There's an opportunity for people to even get together and still form bands and and, and make good music. And so there's an opportunity outside if your music is good. Yes, of course. Um, right now it's very lucrative if you if you have a head on your shoulders. Well, I ain't have no intentions. I could pass this on to you people out there. Young people, listen to me. Go in there, get to be a very good musician. And the, the, the key to it is create. You must create your own. Wherever you have a musician, 
You just all your life, you playing, playing, playing for people, playing over people's songs. They don't get no way. You ain't going to make no money. Create. Write sure. your own songs. Arrange your own music. Create your own things. You might, you could say people, people are saying, okay, let's take friends with the guy Darian. He's, an, he's a good um, violinist in St. Vincent. A very good. I'm so happy that a musician has a surface in St. Vincent. He has to go out there and not play people's songs. Create your own songs. Mm -hmm. If you like classic music, do, do some classic. We could do it. Vincent and have it in, our, in the blood. There are lots of music that we, you can create. Just stay by yourself in your little hideaway. Create your own stuff. Write your own stuff. People don't get famous. Well, except in very um, minuscule times that you, you have one or two people surface doing over a man's song. Because mm -hmm. um, what the reggae band they, they did over Neil Diamond, um, Red Red Wine. And what the band? You'll be, you be 40. You'll be, be 40. 40. Yeah. And people, nobody knew of Red Red Wine. The original. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and they thought it was, it was um, UB40 song. Yeah. UB40 made platinum with that. Mm -hmm. So there are the occasions where you can yeah. do that. Uh, and and, and um, UB40 did it in raw reggae. While mm -hmm. um, Neil Diamond, he did it in a kind of pop. Red, red, wine. Mm -hmm. Kind of um, flat kind of thing. But these guys <laughs> jam it reggae style. And mm -hmm. they got somewhere. Even that too, you can do because that is creating. Take True. a man things and twist it around and, and make a money too. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you do. You, you have to be original. You can't be sitting down and backing up a fella and playing over people's music and feel you're going to get anyway. You're not going to get away, not be enough money. True. But while I'm saying that, we made Touch made some money every carnival with the t shirt band mm -hmm. because we sold t shirts. We sold upwards to 20,000 t-shirts one time at $25, right? So you calculate that. Wow. So that was per year, you know, you got that you get that per year. Mm -hmm. And I must say here, I have an opportunity too. So I would say we really thank our fans in all the countries overseas. And even overseas from Canada, they just send for t-shirts from us down here. Mm -hmm. Because they're proud to wear a t-shirt from Touch or Beckett or true, Exodus, true. right? So... We, are, we, are, we really thank you all for the support that you give us when we were Iban. Yes? Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, man. Big up, Touch. And, and thank you for, for the contribution, man, musically to, to, to the culture. You know, because you guys came around when the, you know, the competition was tight, but you, you pulled it through. Imagine you have to compete. The band has to compete with Beckett and Soso. Just, just that alone is, is, you know, just success. Um, before she becomes in, tell me what um, wh where is Touch now though? Well, I never think Touch has been defunct right? because <laughs> we, like I said, I tell you, we are going to play for this carnival. So if you want to come down for a little party, CPNU, and you uh, uh, to wine all the old ways. <laughs> maybe, we might bring, maybe we might bring you guys together. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea too. You know? and, um, yeah, we could work. Well, we, could, we could work something out on that, man. You know. Because, you know, you, players, you guys still have fans, you know? One of our fans, one of our, our, our band members out there, Gideon, it'll be very easy. Mm -hmm. he, he lives in um, Montreal. So you must know Gideon. James, oh. he's our, our keyboardist, drummer, and um, vocalist. He's up there. So mm -hmm. all you have to do now is holler and touch you ready. You just tell us and we're ready. Look, equipment it in this studio from touch. And, mm -hmm. we, and we try to to um, song the same because our fans are strange. One year we tried to do some other things like um, play different instruments and, and spice it up now to get it more modern. Mm -hmm. And our fans say, no, 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 we ain't want that. We want to hear touch, touch. With, with, yeah. with, with, the, with the clap going pop, pop, mm -hmm. and, and the steel and them ding, 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 ding. We want to hear that. Don't change the brand, please. That's what we know all here. Don't change it. It's like the Beatles playing, um, um, hey, Jude, don't let it try and play it in Calypso. It wouldn't sound good, and the instruments they might choose mightn't be classical. People wouldn't like it. True. So they, they, they want us the same old way, so they force us back down, kick us back down. It's still hungry. That's what we want you. <laughs> and, and we hear by them. But that doesn't mean we did do a little breakthrough 
in a kind of modern way. I did it in this studio here with a, this song, our last road match, which was in 2000, Take Away Somebody Woman. That's not a touch song. That's not traditionally. If you listen to all our songs and you could play Take Away Somebody Woman, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So we got away with that one. They, they, they forgive us. Perhaps <laughs> the, the, good, the, the good vocals, Godfrey, Godfrey sang on that one. Yeah. I had written that one and Willis arranged and so. And that was the only time they had accepted us with something different. Yeah. Brian, I was going to ask a question, but I think you answered it for me. Uh, in England, every time I have a, a touch contribution, my meter goes. You are still very popular in England. Yeah, and yeah we are, we're still popular in England. I yes. wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. We on Thursdays, from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. on my radio station, I just didn't see music. Mm -hmm. I play nothing else but Vincentia music. That's great. That even on, even on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, basically from one, is Vincentia music. So I try to push a lot of Vincentia music, and I notice now in Europe, it's going up. So you're telling me that Calypso is picking up. But the kind of Calypso that is really the modern beat, as you want to call it, the touch type of Calypso, that do a lot, that do a lot of um, upliftment in, in, in Europe. So just, just, just a little heads up for you. So you well, thank you for the heads up. And, and we're very proud to um, be current Vinci flag. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I'll tell you something. I applaud you too also for, for doing this. You and Moulton. Yeah, because I, I tell you one of the things that we, we try to do here, um, Brad, is that we notice, as Moulton will tell you, that sometimes we listen to other radio stations and they have people like reggae music where they are more peace. But I notice in Calypso, there's no more peace of essential music. So that's why we try to go back to you guys, the older set first, so that you guys can tell your story. If you notice, we just allow people to tell a story. You know, we set you up and because that in itself can lead to other people to come into the music from yeah. hearing your story. So that's why I, I told you, don't expect to come on my radio station for 30 to 30 minutes or an hour. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, people call me parrot too in the band because uh, you, you, you choose the right man. I will talk all night. <laughs> you know, we, you know, we went to school together, and so I know. <laughs> you know, you know. They, I, I was given all kind of names, all labels, boasting, bragging, all sorts of things, but not arrogant. No, I know. You know, you have, I remember all those little um, dry jokes, if you want to call it. Anyway, see, yeah. Brian, you, you, somebody's laughing. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, I, I want the entertainer in truth. Um, that's true. But um, the music, don't don't feel too badly, Moulton and um, CP. Mm -hmm. Um. Music will come back up again. I, I, I want to, if you permit me, I want to tell you a little story. You, you when Bob Marley had died, his music was playing like for 10 years and that kept the reggae vibe while Yellow Man and them were playing their dance hall stuff. But so the dance hall were more popular when Bob Marley died. I think we should all agree that. Mm -hmm. As soon as Bob Marley died, the, 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 traditional reggae that we love mm -hmm. with, with, the, with, the, with the positive vibes they took a little dive, not too much. And Jimmy Cliff was trying to hold it up, but we'll see, he wasn't enough. True. But nowadays, the dance hall is there, existing. But you notice it's petering out. So people are getting kind of a, a custom and maybe fed up with it. I just tell you how music is, is doing us. So don't, don't worry that I'm... Um, that Calypso and Soka wouldn't come back. So up comes this old man, older than me, named Paris Hammond. I don't know if you all really see that going through, through the um, spectrum, musical spectrum, where you didn't must even realize it happened. Mm. Paris Hammond brought a monster album. And I show you, must know some, you have some of his songs there. I believe it must be 12 songs. And Beres Hammond, at his age, was, was able to, to attract people to reggae again, just as much as when Bob Marley was around. And he brought love songs and he 
beautiful song. You know some of the songs them for Barry Salmon. Barry mm -hmm. Salmon is one of the most popular reggae artists in my mind for parties. Mm -hmm. Cause every there can't be a, a party in a West in, in the West Indies without a Barry Salmon song sing, um, being played. It must play. You must play at least one True. because he True. have over 30. I show him as he have 50, right? And mm -hmm. 50 good ones, good hits. So I'm just showing you what CP said, eh? Um, Calypso will get back the turn, mm -hmm. Reggae. Will, not Reggae, um, Soka will get back to where it was one of these days. CP, let me just jump in in one second. Um, to, 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 again, compliment what you said there, Brian. Beris right now is taking Popcorn, who is a new artist, new generation artist, and he did two collabs with Popcorn. And, and mm -hmm. they both, he did her mother's the one and he did the one. All I say, all I do is. So now yeah. he's, he's bringing the, the new generation into liking his style and people can, can relate to it. That was my. Yes. my, my yes. Just for a brief moment, Garnet Silk, um, when Bob Melly had died, Garnet Silk had got a little play there, but mm -hmm. um, it wasn't enough. It, it wasn't consistent. Garnet Silk is a lifestyle. Can't remember. Who? Garnet Silk? Uh, Silk. No, he died. Know, he died years he ago. He died, yeah. Ago. So when he died again, th there was another flip. So, but the man who holding it up is a man who was in his 60s. He's very salmon there, except for the guy who sang, she's royal, but he like, he's not consistent because he sang one song, he's royal, mm -hmm. and then there was nothing. We are waiting on hits from you. You ain't giving me no hits. Very salmon mm -hmm. give me 15, one day. So, and that could play for another 15 years. So that's how I like to see it. Bob Marley, Bob Marley have a, 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 a um, reggae album in his day. We fighting over which song is the best boy. You don't think it's One Love? Nah, man, I think it's Catch a Fire. Nah, man, the best song had to be coming in from the cool. We arguing. <laughs> True. Nowadays, a, a people bring a song, bring, bring an album, one song. You know, one song on it. Everybody know. And all the rest of the song is, is just canon father. So when you you know that's what I, what I want to talk about. So so can come back once there are people who are consistent and who are creative. Look at Kes, uh, you know, you see Kes, look at him. Eh? That's the man who will bring back Soka up to where it um supposed to be. But he's, he's underrated though. <laughs> he's very he's underrated. I know yeah. I know. <laughs> we we were underrated when we started. Bob Marley maybe was underrated when he started. You don't know. When it starts, when the, you, you have to show the people your, your skills and the music and afterwards they get accustomed. Some things just be writing. They don't uh, normally just come through like that. Like, like this girl who sing the umbrella, the girl from Barbados, the, the lady from Umbrella. Sorry for sick calling her girl. The lady from, from I just, I re, I, what's her name Rihanna. again? Rihanna. Right. She came on, bam! You know, with the umbrella song. And you know, she was lucky, she get through, right? Mm -hmm. But um, it have other people who have to fight. It other people to fight, fight, fight till they, they get a the hit, you know? I mean, what is his name? Stevie Wonder. When he started, people laughed. Well, know what? He's, he, every song that Stevie Wonder sing after that is a household song in, in a in, in a um in your house. You know, everybody know it, you know, ribbon in the sky, yeah. Uh, um, she's the sunshine of my life. People know that. I just called to say I love you seem to be one of his big ones still. Right. And re ribbon something. Re yeah. Re 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 right. Call to say I love. Yes. So that's yeah, what I'm you. saying. So you see the people make it big. They, they have to be consistent. You can't be a one tune like the fella who sing everybody was kung fu fighting Carl Carlton. One song. You know? <laughs> kung fu fighting. That's all we know him as. You know? And, and then I think the guy, Sam Stone, who sang, Sam Stone came home to his wife. And f I think that was one song again. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be consistent. Have a lot of records so people will know you. But if, if I really go back to a, a local artist that um, do something that I really like is, if you take it to Scotcher. Scotcher had some songs, as we say, you got to read between the lines. But his consistency with the stories were, were real good. Yes, Carter is a master. You know, Carter technically got the road match of the Caribbean one time with um 
with uh oh gosh, what's the song? Party fever. It's party fever. Yeah, party fever, and yeah. It was road match in Trinidad, but they were ashamed they couldn't give a Vincent general road match. Just like <laughs> an arrow. Arrow had got a song, arrow, it's arrow. Arrow short shot had a song in, in, in um Trinidad. Fire in the back seat of one of them songs. Yeah, that's swallow. Well, right, one of them. He was road match down there, but they're ashamed. They can't give a Vince or, or um, Antiguan the road match. But Party Fever was road match in, in, in Trinidad that year when, when Scorcher came out. And yeah, every man. song Scorcher made when he was around us, I mean, when he was an art, actual artist, active, was, was, was a hit. Every single one. So, 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 Beckett, um, Kaljic Fobbs, and those guys were people who we, we thought were foreign, but they did a lot for the carnival. A lot, a lot. Yeah. Even, even on the radio, Scott, Scott just seems to be a song, seems to be a popular song because sometimes I just put out requests and some of Scott's songs is still being requested. A lot of top yeah. songs is still being requested. You know, if you, if you go to reggae, is it is the like the um, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, you know, Gregory Isaacs, those songs are still being requested. Right. So people, because they have class. And, and they, they tell a story. As you say, right. nobody's singing on, on other rhythm. They put out their own thing and, and, they, and they went out to tell a story. So these songs nowadays, as you say, somebody singing on other people rhythm. We have to be a little bit more in order to get things out because. Some of these songs I can't play them because nobody knows anything about them. Is there's never a story behind it? Yeah, it's flat. I mean, flat. I mean, some of these guys could be ashamed of themselves. I will hit them hard, really and truly. I wish you could have a, a program for me to call Vex. I, I, and I really turn. I'll hit them because the songs that make no. Listen, some of the songs that got road march down here in Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. I don't. I don't think I could remember the name or the song. Most of to have it in my brain, you know? It, it, it's a disgrace. And um, you see, people, <laughs> there must be a different way of getting road match. It must be that it, anyway, let's not talk. It, this is not for that. <laughs> it, it, this is not for that. <laughs> this is not for, for that. You know, I don't want to put a bad taste in the young guys. I would want them to listen to us, Beckett and whoever who know, who know. And, Follow the trend. It's not like somebody tell me the other day, um, don't worry, Brian. Everything of a cycle has come right back wrong. But we can't go so far from our, our, our roots, our foundation, so far that nowadays you can't you can't even recognize if it is music or something else. You know, it, it can't be so far, man. Come on. You you paint your everybody in the in the in a village paint the house in blue, pink, red. And you want you want to be different, but you paint your house in black. You know that's what that is. You know you paint a house in black in a in the Caribbean in the tropics. Your damn house gonna be hot no ass, right? Can you say ass on the radio? <laughs> I don't say it. <laughs> I apologize, donkey then donkey. So so it's black, and but you're too far. You have to change that color. It it, 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 it ain't happening for you, my brothers and sisters. You all have to get the foundation. Don't be ashamed to go back in time, listen, listen to the, the, the artists of long ago and, and learn a thing or two and come back and better those artists. Don't come play something that is watered down. Better them. Like, look what um, Barry Saman has reinvented himself, you know? Try and better your position in life and work hard. Don't just jump up and, and, and press a button and feel, yeah, I get something that sounds good, boy. Yeah. It's not like that. Make a full, comprehensive um, product so people would like it. Think about the people you want to sell your songs to. Think about the people who are listening. Your audience is not only your little baby people from 12 to 18, 21, 28. Is everybody I want to listen to? I'm listening to Kess now, right? But I like to listen to a couple of young boys and young girls who are singing, you know? That's how it is. When all the fed up on me, tell me now, go on. <laughs> is, any, 
is more. I'm gonna tell you when he's ready. When he's ready for you to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what don't just say when I'm ready? Don't worry. Don't worry. We're gonna. Um, I'm gonna wrap up before I pass you over to 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 sip you with um with a few things there. Because the first time I actually came close to you was, I think I saw you playing cricket. And you were this multi, multi boosting guy who just, I think you just got out or something like that. Could have been in Kellogg, not Kellogg, it could have been in Alice Sion Hill or Georgetown, I think. Right? So you witness them, right? you witness them cheat, they cheat me. You witness it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think actually, I think that was the argument. So that means, that means Brian Alexander never out. <laughs> you're one of them guys, you're one of them guys who never out when you're out. <laughs> you have no yeah, stop. The, the ball is going down like side, man. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, don't like dude. LBW, eh? mm. I don't mind the other house, but the LBW, man, that's true, a hard true. Out, yeah? yeah, LBW is one of the hardest out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big cricket fan too, so, so and I'm, I'm yeah. a big player. I played yeah, yesterday and stuff, you know. at my age, I played yesterday and stuff. Mm. I, I love cricket and music, man. I, that, mm. Those are my two love. love All right, I, I play still too. So, so if you were not a cricketer and a musician, what would you be? Or what would you what would have been your preference? Your other preference? Cricket. Cricket. Everyone was not a musician or uh, or a cricketer, because cricket. I know you love cricket and music. So so outside of that. Boy, I, I can't even see past those two things. <laughs> I mean, especially music. I listen, I, I wonder if you all know how important a musician is. Mm. A musician is perhaps the most important person on earth. So why I don't want to be that? Now, Clinton and Reagan and all those guys couldn't go in certain countries Well, Michael Jackson could go in those countries. A, mm -hmm. a, a musician have the passport for the earth. We the only people. Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we are the only people who, who could go anywhere or not. It doesn't matter what government is in power. It was kind of the, poli the policies of that place. Even though it's an Islamic place, they invite musicians. Musicians have a free passport. Our um, we 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 we're just so important, and we make people happy. I've never heard. We decide the mood of people. I mean, sure. forty percent of the people on earth rely on music for their temperament. Could you tell me besides food and what and so? Shell, even shelter, shelter is not so even important as music. Anything else that's important? You know, I learn on this program, I learn, you know, so many things you know, every week, you know, and that's what I like about being here, you know, the thing, because actually you, you're saying it, you know, who else can make people faint? You know, I tell you, musicians. yes, the Beatles, I remember I saw a, a little snippet, the Beatles landing down in, I think it was California or Washington. And two, two, three people fainted in truth. You're right. But the Michael Jackson Pepsi tour, people, they were ambulance were taking people on stretcher. They were taking people on stretcher from the thing. People just look at Michael and just faint. The, the things he, he would just go on stage and they, and they faint. You know, so. A woman, a woman screamed till they couldn't catch the breath. They had to carry mm -hmm. them out the place. And mm -hmm. only music could do that. Nothing else except a man cough you. True. <laughs> And, and Brian, you said something earlier on also. I'm just reflecting on you know, what you said, you know, also. And I'm just letting people know, like, th this conversation is not really just a conversation. If you listen to it, you learn stuff from it. You also said that men don't men don't buy anything. And I and I heard that from, because I used to have a, a clothing store also, and I heard that from um, a store owner. He said, when you have men customers, you have them for good because they don't like to go anywhere else and shop. And men, when we buy something, you buy a pants. And that pants yeah. has to last you how long. <laughs> and, you, know, you know what I mean? While women, they change yeah. all the time. Yes. Know, so really, we don't, we don't really generate much economically, you know, changing, changing over cash and, you know, and goods. You, yeah, know? you could imagine a bachelor living in a house by himself. Mm -hmm. You think mm -hmm. those curtains going to ever get changed? <laughs> they ain't changing no cotton. Once it's your cotton look clean and it ain't tea, mm. a man will leave that mm. in. His mother had to come in and say, Jesus, Fonzo, I saw that since 1948. What's going on? Oh, mommy, it ain't look good. And that's how it is. Men don't buy things. They, buy, they might buy a couple of things to eat. 
But did the, the women who do all the shopping, men Hello. don't do nothing, nothing. We mm -hmm. are like women, that. We yeah. are wired that way. Yeah, and you cater for the kids. The adults are gonna come, you know. So you 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 know teaching us also economics there too, you know. So, um, like I said, this program is this program is not just about you know we having Brian on and stuff like that. It's doing for me. It's doing the exact things that you know we're catering it to do to educate and inform and motivate you know for our people for for the next level. And I know we can talk and talk and talk and talk. But um, if you don't mind, let me put you on the spot. Who, who do you see as um, some of the future artists coming out of St. Vincent? We're not talking about the skinny and the problem who already made it. We're talking about, about young and upcoming artists. Well, I'm not much in the loop so much that I, I am turned off so much that I am not too much in the loop. I, I'm trying to go wrong now and do exactly what you want me to do there in um mm. canvassing for people, you know. But um um I wouldn't say Scorpion is that old, but he's a good artist. He's clean, he's mm. um his topics are good, he could write, mm. he can sing. Sure. And um I, I like Scorpion. Um, he's listening right now. Hello? Say hello to him. He's listening right now. <laughs> oh <laughs> hello Scorpion. And now because I, I did a couple of songs for him too. He used to do our his calypso. He has one of the strangest stories I, I know. Mm -hmm. Um he was into, I think he he, he sang, I don't know if it was his semifinal. Yeah, he sang in a calypso semifinals. He did that song by me. And I tell him, man, you're gonna make the finals, don't worry. But that that night he had a little problem with one of the voices. But he had come so good that I think he was still in the top three. No, they didn't pick him. I dropped him home, I think. I dropped him home the night he was living in um, shops. And I dropped him home. I say, Scorpion, you're getting picked. He said, but Brian, you're dotish. The, 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 the um, list don't come up, my name in it. You, you, where are you coming from, you're a magician or what? That's how you just talk. We, 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 we're really close. And, um, and I say, boy, you're getting picked. Don't worry yourself. A song like what you had, it can't be left out of the final. Never. So he, um, one morning the man called me. He said, boy, you're um, a man, boy. He said, you know, one, you know, they, they had, oh, I didn't tell you this. They had him on the reserve. He was picked on the reserve list for the final. And one, one of the gentlemen had to go to England for something or the other. And Scorpion got in. And if I'm not wrong, if he's listening, he could, could um, correct me. No, he told us he was, the story already. Huh? He was on this show and he told us the story already. He got king. I, I he can't got the king. The, yeah, but he told us that um, he was left out and somebody dropped out and he came in. Yeah, yeah, he told us that already. And he won the crown. I think, Just, yeah, I think, I, think, I think he said that. I think he won. You know, Scorpion can correct that if he's listening, but I, I think he won. That's why he told that story. Yeah. So you, you see yeah. you see how judging this go. How could a man who came, his last he came really because they put him on the reserve list, yeah. right? So you come last, but you could be able to come in with not such a powerful second song, right? Which I'm saying, I'm charging that his fourth song really was the song. So if that song, if you left that song out, how could he ever be king? So something was wrong. And I said, that goes to show how, how this world is always positive. You never know what would happen. Mm -hmm. and, and what I like about Scorpion, not because he's listening, I told him that, you know, he remained relevant. You're saying Scorpion is not so old, but musically, he's, he's a rock, you know, so, so and he remained relevant. He can, and like I told him the other day also, he has a song for any occasion. You can call Scorpion and he gives you a song for that occasion. He has a song already for that occasion. Mm -hmm. All of his songs are geared towards different occasions, so... That's the, that's the genius in him in the in the writing. But Brian, again, let me touch back again. And you said you were the weakest. That's why right. you said you were the weakest. And let me touch back again when you said you you learn and you you transfer those key from the guitar to the keyboard um, or the piano. And mm -hmm. that's that's genius again too. So you know, so 
I, you know, I'm, I'm glad you don't look at yourself like how you look at yourself in cricket musically because. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's common sense, well, common sense but, well, if you say genius, I will, ha I will mm. have to claim it, but I, I know any genius. I'm more, uh, but let, let me just claim it this time. Yeah. Musically, I, I, musical, musically, uh, but. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I, mean, I like to be modest when it comes to music because I know there are so much people who are better. Oh, yeah. great. Of course. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of musicians out there, but coming from, remember, you know, we're from a, a, a tiny island, you know, and, yeah. and like you said, most of our musicians don't have this um, theory, um, theoretical practice where, you know, they go to school and learn um, to play a, an instrument. So when you guys develop into musicians that, um, that solve the region or the world, we have to, you know, applaud you guys for, for what you're doing as a musician, you know. So when we're from the small island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and our songs are being played internationally, it's a, it's a big, uh, big motivation for the country, a big motivation for the people. And you know, you know how good it is when you're in foreign and you hear a Vinci song played somewhere, even in a party. Yeah, yeah that's Vinci true. Song playing, man, it's, it's, you know, like, yeah, I'm home, you know. Yeah, um, I, and I could follow up. I could follow up on what you said. There. Um, and you asked me about the the uh, people who I think would, would make it through, and I said Scorpion. And why mm -hmm. I mentioned age is because you said young people, but Scorpion is very mm -hmm. young. But mm -hmm. um, and it brought me back to way, to a very bad place because mm -hmm. imagine I can't, I can't name one young person who's just who's a, a better than the breast, who's holding up him or her head above. It, it's bad. The country's mm -hmm. in a bad place right now regard, as regards vocalists, vocalists, people can sing, and, mm -hmm. and um, musicians also. We're mm -hmm. in a bad, bad place. We need help. Right? In my days, we had so much competition. So much, yeah. And, and so much people available. You could have you named a Pat Raggy, a Donna Nichols. Uh, so much people women who could sing, you know? Godfrey mm -hmm. Dublin is a, one of the greatest singers in St. Vincent, mm -hmm. you know? Scorpion is now coming up, he's a singer. And people, I mean, at the time of people could sing. If you listen to mm -hmm. Posa, Posa is a marvelous singer. <laughs> oh, These people could sing. Skaldrick Forbes can sing. Winston Susso could have sing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, could have sang. And, and so you go on, and everybody who exposed in those days could sing. But you really make me feel sad here because you ask me, can I point somebody for the future? And I can't. I don't know if it's because I'm not in the loop. And perhaps now most people singing in the church. Perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> but I am not seeing anybody posting up the head above the, 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 the waves there. Trust me. And it's right. really sad. It's sad. Something has to be done. And I think some businessman like URCP could, mm -hmm. could now go and canvas in the whole country. Perhaps let's do a talent show. And, and get some a group in together and we put them in a school and let them learn. I don't know. It's sad, sad, sad. Really well, sad. I'm glad you're a cricket man because you can relate to it. It's like you were in this team, right? At one time we had so many talented, good cricketers. Some of them so good and they can't make the team. And now, you know, where are they now? We don't have any in the West Indies team. So I guess you can compare the music in St. Vincent like, like that pretty much, you know? Yeah, but when, but when you look at other islands, you know, and you see the people showcasing in Barbados, they're showcasing in, in, in um, St. Lucia, not so much Grenada, but you know, and you're seeing people, you could see people who one day will make it. And we can see that in St. Vincent. And St. Vincent, I must brag here, St. Vincent, the leader, was, was the leader in our days in music. These people from Trinidad, when they wanted to do so, they used to come down and scrib. And that's no joke. We know, I have heard songs from St. Vincent that was replicated in Trinidad. Even the title, like, like um, I remember one person sang, and, and I, what, what, what's the word there? Tam, what's the, when a woman put you, what's her name again? Uh, um, Tabanka. No, next thing, Tabanka. Tabanka's <laughs> award came from here. Mm. And I hear them take it from Trinidad, in Trinidad and they're singing about that. They took it from Tommy T. Remember Tommy T sang a song, mm. Tabanka. So they used to come down here, and scribble ideas and go back up. And that, during our carnival, they get it, and then they go back up. And that's no joke. Taking our musician, taking our style of music, and label it 
I know that the label Ring Bang and um, Raga Music out of St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. the, the, the group Gratitude started a song, party, 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 in West mm -hmm. Indian Festival. That's one of the first Raga, along with Beckett, when Beckett sing, Marijuana, listen to that. Mm -hmm. Those things, and then Touch took it up too. And when we sing songs like Teresa, Kiki, mm -hmm. Loving Can Done, you know? The raga started here, but we never labeled it. And a lot of things have been created in St. Vincent. And I will repeat again, this must be for the 90th time. Um, Fireman Hooper has a beat. When he started out a beat with, with Adrian Bailey, with put up, put up the wood under the pot. I don't know if you had a tune they could have played. Put up the wood under the pot. That and Araconda. Mm -hmm. that, that is not so good. It's something new. And I could, I, if you close your eye when those songs are playing, you could visualize a man running through a forest and a, and a, and a lion chasing him down. That's how I'm seeing it. Put up the wood up and up and do. Now, if Fireman, you know, all this telling me, you must be laughing at me. If he, in, in um, Grenada, they have this thing where you tie up your skin and put all kind of thing. What do you call it? The job, the job, the job, job, job. job, job yeah. What? That is theirs. Mm. What's so special about job, job? What is sure. theirs? Mm. Grenada have job, job. St. Vincent have nothing. Mm. But still, Raga came from me. And then Fireman, who had the opportunity now to label his thing, brand it as his own. Because put on, when I gone, from this program here, mm -hmm. um, put on, put up the wood on the pot and put on um, Fireman Alaconda. Put it near a song now for Beckett or uh, Winston Soso or uh, even Touch, Exodus, Black Sand and see if it's song anything like us. It's mm -hmm. not us. Fireman is a special man and don't know. It's just like, um, we have a lot of people, uh, Hooper, we don't talk cricket, Hooper, which was one of the world's greatest batsman. He didn't know. So he never batted. <laughs> True. But True. The man, it was the greatest thing. Classic, classic, classic. But he classic. never knew that. So mm -hmm. you have to know your, um, when you name Garden Green, knew he was great. And Garden Green play those shots and stay in the damn wicket and make 200. Well, Hooper will hit two, three classical fours and then come out to 28. You know, that's mm -hmm. not it. We have to do better in St. Vincent. And I don't think it's too late for Fireman Hooper to package his music, even go back to the time of um, Agent Bailey, when Agent Bailey is arranged for him, mm -hmm. and, and let re us... Rebrand, rebrand. Rebrand. Now, yeah. if I go now and take one of Fireman's song, right? Like the Alakan, the, the wood under the pot is the most classic one, because mm -hmm. that beat, eh, I don't know why Agent did really. Because it's a, a soca beat and it it's some rumbly but nice and it's making you dance, you know. It's almost mm -hmm. devilish, you know. Listen to mm -hmm. it, close your and listen to it. <laughs> and um, and uh, I go take that now. If I go thief that now, and I say I name it, I name it um jungle, jungle something, and mm -hmm. I claim it as mine, people then I go vex. <laughs> then I was it. But I did something for St. Mm -hmm. Vincent, so St. Vincent could have something. So we waited on Fireman one day to take up my idea and rebrand his beat. Touch and Beckett. And um, what the name? The, the band from Pause that day who sang Party, Party, Party. We lost our time because they That's took it. Gratitude. gratitude. We, we lost it. But nobody. Nobody yet has have had um, um, Fireman Hooper's beat. They, they have not captured it. There's no other beat on earth. That's what Adrian did there. And they don't even know what they did. Wow. So <laughs> yes. Fireman, listen up to, to one of the masters in the business. You know, yeah. Brian, um, what, you, um, what you said there, you brought the fifth person who said that, like, I didn't know that, that, um, Trinidad and Barbados, they used to come down. But you're about the fifth person on this program who said that. So I, I believe that I, I guess I was too young to really know those kind of things, or we don't know the in depth of those things. But yeah, 
I heard we used to be the leader and Trinidad and Barbados used to come down and, and take our music and take our musicians. Just like what you said, you're about the fifth person to say, to say that on this program. So it is, it is, uh, it is a fact that, that, that happened. You know, um, all in all, um, just tell us quickly where your studio is located for people who, and the services you offered at your studio. Well, um, my studio, it, it, it's a, I don't do it um, for commerce, Public, really. Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I do help by pro bono, and sometimes I take monies from people who can afford. But I have a studio, it's, it's located in um, Beach Monk. And my number is 531 3658. I, I, I could create beats, I could arrange your songs, I could do ads. I do ads all the time for, for, um, people down here, um, stores and so. And I, I do voice because I have a terrible voice, but I could get people to voice that ad. And all in all, I, I love to stay in my studio and create. I, I help people who can't help themselves. And, and if you can pay, you can come and I fix you up, your song. I'm very cheap and mm -hmm. very cheap too, because I don't charge that money. I know it is economically in some okay. Sunny Grenadines. Hey, we are in a terrible place right now, you know. Yeah. And not only St. Vincent too, it, it's all about it's things. Are just, all over, it's, all over. Man. It's, so, it's so bad. Mm -hmm. And how can they reach you um, on social media? Well, uh, everybody know me as B-R-Y-A-N, Alexander, A-L-E-X-A-N-D. -E uh, I'm on Facebook, Brian Alexander. I run my little page there where I do everything. And I hope you don't get your all turned off because sometimes... I, I do get um, political, and Scorpion, if he's listening, he don't like me in that in vain at all. He's like, Brian, yeah, stop that, man. I don't like this <laughs> politics thing. And he's scared to come on my page, Scorpion. But I do, when I see things going bad, I do talk, you know? And, but mostly I'm a, I, I really entertain my, the people on my page uh, with com comic, comic things. And I also um, go back in time I go. I, I love history, and I and I do into like you doing me now. I interview people on the street uh, about our culture. I interview people who are below the radar. I don't go for people who are too famous because sure. they had their time time already. But there are people who don't talk, and they do a lot. Like the fella Ian Sardin, he is a man who who holds up our um, the nursery in football. He all the little toddlers and so go down to the pasture down there and, and, and they get trained from him. He get, give them gaze, he bring coaches there and he's doing that for a very long time. But he don't talk. He's cool just like Willis and, um, and um, I feel they don't talk. So <laughs> they ain't boasting and they ain't going and blaming the shoulder and say, me just do that, me do that. So those kind of people are who I like to highlight. And you see like Scarpen too, he's, he's very cool. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I like him too. Eh? Real I, soldier. Scarpen yeah. is a family here, man. <laughs> right. And not because, you know, he's my friend, I'm talking like mm -hmm. that. I'm just seeing that there are cool people who are below the radar in St. Vincent mm -hmm. who people don't talk about. Those are the people I, 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 um, I target in my interviews on the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Ryan, man, it's been an absolute privilege. It's a pleasure again to connect with you. Um, do continue to you know, help out our, our music, man. And I hope to see Touch again very, very, very soon, Brian Alexander and Touch, you know. So once again, man, thanks for the opportunity, your time, and for sharing your story with us. I'm, uh, CP is going to have the last word, but for now, Moulton's here signing out. Thank you very much, Moulton, for having me. Brian. Uh, you yes. talk about a few things that I'm, I was supposed to ask you about, too, you know. I, one of the problems I'm having here, because I'm here, I need somebody back there sometimes to help me out with uh, I want to interview a lot of these sportsmen and sportswomen that make a lot of contribution to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I know sometimes you have one time I think I saw something with you and Gailo. And yes, 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 yes. Yeah, but there's a lot of... Uh, Players who went through but a football cricket about to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and uh, I need a base there sometime because I definitely need them to tell a story. 
because I know man like Guy Lua and those, I play with Guy Lua already, you know, with Rosian, so I know these guys have a lot of story to tell. Yes, yeah, so yeah, um, call me anytime. Okay, Ian Sardine is one at, at those guys because he was president of the Football Federation. I was around him on a long time. So guys like that, I need to um, get set up to um, do, do some interviews with. So I'm, I'm just putting it out to you. You might you might be my go man, but I know um, for somehow we've been along we've been around for a long time too. So so I'm 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 gonna continue for something like that, and then um, see if we can go from there. Well, no, man, it was um, a pleasure. And it's always a pleasure talking to you. You know, we always we went back a long time, so you are not somebody that I just know in the street. Although Molten used to tell me, Time to bring Brian and she said, No, man, me and he went to school together. So the time went up is every day. He's at Race Bayard. He keeps bugging me every day to bring you on the show, but um, I said, The time gonna come because <laughs> I, I know I know how it is. So it's easy to get you. I know it was easy to get you, so I wasn't really that bad at. But yeah, I, 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 that way you had so much questions you were prepared for me man long time man you was prepared for you a long time <laughs> yeah. your story man your story your story you know? yeah <laughs> but, but, anyway, it, it's been a pleasure man it's always a pleasure talking to you um whenever you want to come back because it's not going to be your last okay thank you very much for having me um morton and cp and um i don't want it to be something like if i mean you are talking to me all the time but without without those gen, those guys in touch, I would have been nowhere. And it was it's not about Brian; it's about touch the whole band, which um a lot of people passed through. Like I told you, it's an institution. We we had a lot of ladies who were singing. A lot of we had drummers. We had all sorts of people who I can't name all right now. Well, I named someone and I started out. I wouldn't go over them again. And who made me and who made touch? Is the whole country really and truly? You, you, um, without, without even knowing, you copy people and don't even know, like I told you earlier before. So the bands who are wrong, all the bands like Climax, Asterix, Envoys, all those bands, you know, they help to make another band or make a person. So it's like a whole country making an institution which was touched. And we really thank all our supporters. All those years from 85 back when we started, right up to when we ended in, when we had our last road match in 2000, we had great support. We, the support never wavered. We got a little bit of heckling and the most heckling we got from the people who rivaled us. And they even sang songs on us, which we enjoyed too also. So thanks for having me, um, CP and Ms. Ann Moulton. And I would, it will be a pleasure to come back to talk on old times because I'm a old man. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Thanks a lot, man. Goodbye. Yeah.